Raleigh, North Carolina, a city of universities, a city of neighborhoods, block by block, campus by campus, people longing and looking for purpose, looking for love. What I'm seeing is that there's a movement rising of followers of Jesus taking seriously Jesus' commands to go. People adopting a block, a school, a people, and loving them like Jesus and pointing them to Jesus. Transformation and movement has begun in our city. My name is Nico and I'm from North Carolina, I'm born and raised. While I was in college, I had this, uh, this opportunity as a freshman to lead our, um, our campus ministry, uh, prayer ministry on Wednesday nights. We wanted to see students awaken to who they are in Jesus. I'll say we wasn't okay with the state of where our campus was. And so we met um, before our, our large group gathering on Wednesday nights. A, a group of small group of us would meet and we'll just pray for God to show up on our university for God to show up in our meeting that night. It was super diverse with students from all different walks of life. We just began to see a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit on campus from athletes encountering Jesus, uh, professors and teachers. I mean, it became the talk and the conversation on campus. And in one of our prayer meetings, uh, I just remember kneeling on the floor uh, just thanking God for how perfect everything was. I'm like, God, like, this is amazing. Like, we are seeing you move on campus. Lives are being changed. Like, we're seeing salvations every week. We're seeing miracles and healings. And, and there's a sense of community and family. The best way I can explain what happened to me is it felt like a bomb fell on me. And I started weeping and crying. And, and I heard the father say, Nico, will you give up, give up uh, school for a season and give yourself fully as a campus missionary to college campuses in America? And uh, I was weeping and crying, saying, no, <laughs> no, God, like I'm, everything is good here. I had a four year revival plan for this university. Like I'm fine, you know, like no, but yet I was just so overwhelmed at the same time with the worthiness of Jesus <laughs> and, um, I was so overwhelmed by that revelation and my my no uh, quickly became yes or yes I'll go um, that was very difficult um, it was a very hard process leaving school and being the first one in my family to go to college and giving up a full ride scholarship to university and to you know giving all that up to to uh, to pursue um, campus ministry and uh, and I just really felt the Lord was saying, Nico, what you are seeing on your on your university right now is what I want to see on campuses all across this nation. Um, I mean, suicide rate is increasing, rape culture is increasing. Uh, we see, uh, I think it's about over 40% of, of young people on college campus uh, report that they struggle with depression and anxiety. Um, I mean, there there is a great need. A generation is, is lost and they're looking for truth. They don't know what they're looking for, but it's Jesus and they're going so many different ways uh, and avenues in, in trying to get this fulfillment in life. They're longing to be a part of something that is larger and bigger than themselves. So, uh, this is USC Chapel Hill. To our left here is, uh, this is called the pit. And this is really similar to the Brickyard at NC State. Uh, and so we have hosted a lot of, um, really a lot of worship gatherings out here um, in the pit uh, for a number of years. I, I remember one, one gathering in particular, um, we were worshiping and one of our uh, students just really felt led that to, to share the gospel. So, um, so he, he got on the chair and he started just declaring and preaching um, uh, the gospel and so many students started gathering. And while that was happening, we were just grabbing different students who were being drawn and just beginning to, to pray with them and ask for you know how, how they were responding to what was being preached. Yeah. Well, I think God has an amazing plan for your life, dude. Thanks, man. I yeah. appreciate you saying that. Yeah. It means a lot. Yeah, and He loves you more than you can ever imagine.
Uh, I would love just to pray for you guys. If that's fine. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. Hey, man. You guys are awesome. Thanks for being yeah. great. Yeah, yeah it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Absolutely. What's your number? I would just uh, get something that's like nine one nine. So this guy, he was just tripping on acid two weeks ago and had this moment where uh, God convicted his heart in that moment and he was like, I'm done, you know, and now he's, uh, I don't know if he's like fully like following Jesus, but he's like, he's on his heels. He's definitely on his heels. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, uh, so evident. So hopefully we can grab coffee soon. <laughs> Seriously. It starts with prayer, you know, pray for a campus, you know, um, you know, there's campuses all across our nation, whether it's a community college, a two year college or a four year college, pray for a campus, not only just pray, but go visit the campus and prayer wall the campus. And uh, honestly, we have found uh, so, so many amazing connections and in God moments when we just prayer walk campus, the Lord connects us with a person of peace and we begin to build relationship and, and we begin to discover that God is moving there and we begin to get behind that and to you know, encourage that. Um, when I think of adoption, I think of full acceptance. Um, and I think about a generation taking responsibility for a need, a real need. I, I, I believe that college students are going to be uh, the greatest missionaries to neighborhoods and cities. Uh, we have a, uh, a some friends here who has a community in the inner city. They live in the inner city and and they minister every Sunday night. They gather from age zero to probably like 24 <laughs> um, uh, young people who a lot of them who do not know Jesus, who are discovering Jesus. And um, we have seen after just faithfulness and steadiness and being present and living out the gospel, um, not just proclaiming the gospel, but embodying the gospel, living out the gospel, that we're seeing that they're looking at these 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 girls that leave this community and saying like, hey, like, you know, I've been watching you for two years now and, and you respond in such a way, a beautiful way, you, you know, you're responding like Christ and I want that in my life. You know, going back to, to adoption of their taking responsibility, like there's a problem here and I'm not okay with this problem being here. And someone's gonna to have to stand in the gap. Someone's gonna to have to be the answer. And I'm not just going to continue to pray for the Lord to send someone. You know, I'm gonna be the answer to my own prayer. And I'm gonna go and I'm going to, I'm gonna create a community where people can feel love and welcome and they can discover Jesus. Yeah, so we started the Hope House because we were compelled by the love of Christ to love the people around us. So we open our home, we invite whoever wants to come, we cook them a meal, and we just spend time together and we talk about Jesus. We drive to pick them up and we make a, typically a pasta night, um, and we just eat a meal together, and then we go and we have Bible study and open the Bible together and just love on one another. So we're going to East Street, which is um, a place where a lot of the kids who come on Sunday nights live. Um, so we'll pick up a few of the kids, we'll knock on some doors and basically see who's around and who wants to come tonight. Everything we do is cultivated around family and like creating this atmosphere where you belong no matter what. It's been really sweet to see the kids take on the heart of adoption and welcome other people mm -hmm. into this environment. I really feel like the Lord has done so much um, with just belonging at the Hope House. They Last week we talked about what it means to be a family and they were saying, um, y'all made us siblings when we thought that we would never like even speak to each other and y'all have created this safe place that we get to come and like let our guard down and just like all these really sweet things that um they're like this is the first place i come 
and I've actually felt welcome. I've never had like an experience like coming to the Hope House before. Like it was something different than like just going to like a church group or something like that. Because we all, you know, from the moment we started coming, we all grew up like a, a, like a family, like a relationship. I feel like, you know, my life before God, I was doing everything that I wasn't supposed to be doing. I knew it wasn't on a good path for following God. And I knew that everything I was doing was, was, was the complete opposite of what he, what he wants. So, you know, I was just like, I was just a lost soul, basically. I really didn't know anything. I really didn't care about anything. My father, my physical father here on earth, you know, I, I would never really had a relationship and I never, you know, really had, a, I never grew a bond with him. So it was like, when I was growing up, I was like, one, like I always like wanted a father, but I was always be like, this man, I can't see this man. Like, I'm gonna say he's my father. And I don't, it's like, he's not physically here. But, it, you know, I've learned that, you know, like he is here. I, can, like, I know he listens to me and I know that, He's in my heart, like I know who my like my real father is now. It's just it's so much more to life. It's so much more to learn about, you know. To, it's just so much more to life that I didn't know before I knew God. Jesus is everything to me. He is so powerful. Um, I got saved there around March. I remember I was sitting on a white couch that they have in the living room, and um, Kelly mom. Um, Lisa, she was like, have you gave your life to Jesus? And I was like, no, no. She was like, you think it's time? And my heart was like beeping so fast. And I was like, I was like saying the words and like, just something just came over me and I just started crying. And I just got saved that night. I used to be closed in because I've just been through a lot in my life and I was just shy and closed in. But now it's like I speak to people and um, people just see something in me when I don't, and I didn't have very much conf confident in my life, and now I do. And I believe that God brought Kaylee into my life so it can change, and so I can go to Hope House and don't go out to the streets no more and stuff like that. And yeah, it's amazing. Thank you, you never so much. Told me that before. So powerful. What? The heck? <laughs> Are we really gonna stick with people? Are we the next, you know, Christian bomb that's gonna be set off in a community and then disappear? Because people are tired of that. They don't want more of that. Once you get saved, it's not like we're just gonna drop you and say, okay, well, you're done now. You know, we checked you off. You've got your ticket to heaven, so we need to move on to the more unsaved people. <laughs> like, they know that because we've got this community, we're committed to their life. They were committed to their process. And I think that that was Jesus' heart. He committed to a small group of people and he wasn't there to get everybody saved in a day. He was there to commit to those people and to do life with them. And they slept next to him and smelled his BO. And you know, like they, he, they did life. And so I think that, that that was humility. He opened his heart and his life. So the reality is that we all have jobs. Uh, Vicky Lynn and I are still in school. Um, so we we really believe that you can do this even while keeping on a normal, normal life. There's nothing significant about what we're doing or that's different or makes us special or we have some extra ingredient. We have a house, we have an open heart and we have Jesus. We open our doors, anybody can do that.